Hey, do you want to see my gaming PC? Okay, it might be small, but it's still rather heavy. Howdy folks, how are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and yes, there is a second camera in the shot. There's a camera in the camera, it's cameraception. This is my gaming PC. They're probably a lot like it, but not exactly like it, because this one is mine. Longtime channel members over on the Howdy Folks LP channel might remember a time in the not too distant past where I got my original first ever PC case, this absolutely massive Corsell, Corsair. It's like a, carb, a five, Carbide five, 500D, something like that. It's, it's something like that. Huge case. I dug it out of storage and I rebuilt my current modern gaming PC in that case. And that was really cool. But my gosh, was it huge. It was extremely impractical, especially when I have to move my PC fairly frequently, depending on whether or not I want it in this room to record videos or move it to the living room to do LAN parties with my friends or even take it on the go. It was way too cumbersome for that. My original solution for that was to just leave it in the living room and then bring the feed back here using one of these. This transmits full HDMI 2.0 over your bog standard Cat6, Cat6A, Cat7 cable. And that worked, but it had some weird glitches, weird bugs, weird audio problems mostly. And then also my display supports FreeSync. And even if I turned that off, it had some strange issues. So I went back to carting the whole thing around and decided, you know what? I want a smaller computer. So I built one. I built my first ever small form factor. Well, there are smaller cases than this one, certainly. This is the Fractal Ridge. I went with this one because it was the only small ITX case that I could find. Literally the only one. I say the only. There was a couple of other ones I was looking at, but they were out of stock everywhere, which was very upsetting. But that's okay, because I like this case. It's got like a magnetic front. You might have expected to find fans there. And yeah, I could add some. I think specifically, though, this is here to add SSDs. These are like the perfect size for SATA drives, possibly. I don't know what size fan you'd fit in there. I mean, look, you could make an 80 millimeter fan fit there, but that, that's, not the, that's not the point. That's not why that's there. But this, this camera's there so you can look at the inside of this bad boy. And we're going to crack it open because despite wanting to reuse as much hardware as possible, I could only find a couple of really small form factor ATX cases that were on par or I guess on a similar scale to the Fractal Ridge. And the one I found that I really liked was sold out everywhere. So I ended up getting mostly new hardware, uh, but I did keep the GPU. Again, that was the most expensive single component, actually more expensive than every other component in here combined. So I didn't want to get a new one of those, but I'm going to go ahead and pull this thing off. If I remember how to do it. There we go. Ta-da! Let me walk you through some of the components. So here's my GPU, and as you can see, it is absolutely massive relative to the size of the case. Literally two millimeters bigger, and it would not have fit. This is right bang up against the maximum size of GPU in this case. And I actually had to dismantle the top section of the frame just to get it in there. It, it It's a big boy. This is a Radeon... RX 7900 XTX from Gigabyte. I got the name right. I feel like I say the wrong thing every time. I keep wanting to call it a Ryzen. There is a Ryzen 7900 as well. So you can understand the confusion on that front. Beefy GPU. I like it. Let's move on. Here is my power supply. Cooler Master. I've never owned a Cooler Master power supply in my life. I generally go to either Seasonic, EVGA, or Corsair. I went with this model. For a couple of reasons. One, it was $130, which made it the cheapest from a brand I had heard of. There were cheaper options, but I wanted an 850 watt SFX power supply. I had heard of um, Cooler Master. It had decent reviews. Some folks were complaining about the noise of the fan and some coil whine. I don't have either of those issues on mine, thank goodness. Also, as of right now, these are no longer available on Newegg. I guess I bought the last one because literally it immediately went out of stock and they haven't come back up yet as of recording. Do I wish I'd gone with like an EVGA? Yes, but it was $40 more. Oh, funny story though. A Corsair 850 watt SFX power supply went on sale for the same price after this one sold out. So that's fun. Whatever. Look, those are the normal things. All right. Those are the things you expect. This though, I want to talk about what's under here. The keen eyed among you might've already noticed that my RAM 
is uh, laptop SODIMM memory. It is DDR5. We'll talk about that. When I initially started this project, the plan was simply to get an ITX board and take my 5800X3D and just transfer it, transfer it. Sorry, I'm having trouble speaking. I'm very excited. That's probably why. So the plan was to take my 5800X3D out of the ATX board, put it in an ITX board, which are coming down in price, particularly on the secondhand market. ITX boards are expensive. I guess it's difficult to cram everything in there that you need. But uh, then I discovered, courtesy of a couple of YouTube channels I watch, this little bad boy, this little beast here. So Wendell over at level one and ETA Prime both made videos about this. This is a Minis Forum ITX board that has a 13900HX. Let me double check that and make sure. Yeah, so this is the Minis Forum AR900i. I've got the full specs pulled up here. It has a mobile 13900HX, and so that is a 24 core, 32 thread. So that's four performance cores, uh, 16 total performance threads, and then 16 efficiency cores. That is just baffling inside of this little thing, and it, it never draws more than 100 watts. They're mobile parts, sure, but the mobile parts aren't that far removed from the desktop, not at least as much as people think these days. And really the only thing constraining the mobile parts is the thermal headroom of being stuck inside of a laptop. But Mini's form sends it with this absolutely massive cooler attached already. All you have to do is provide your own fan, and I just dug this Noctua fan here out of storage and slapped it on there. I have not noticed, and here's the thing, I've never been one for synthetic benchmarks, so I did not do any A-B testing, but I haven't noticed any difference. I hopped into my games and they all seem to perform as well, if not better, depending on the game, with the mobile 13900H compared to my now admittedly aged 6900, no, 5800X3D. Why am I struggling with these things? As for memory, if you're curious, I got these little fellas here from Mushkin. They are the red line. These are each 48 gigabytes. I have 96 gigs of memory in this system just because I realized I could and that seemed funny. Also, I previously upgraded from 32 to 64 in my last gaming PC just because someone recommended it as a fix for crashing. I don't think that was the cause of my crashing. It reduced it greatly, but I think I actually had a dying SSD and I think it's still dying. It's currently in this system. We're actually replacing that today. That's why I'm taking this thing apart. It's cool though. It's a lot of memory. It's very fun. You'll notice on the front here that, well, I don't know, actually, is it picked up in the, in the camera here? I have no idea. Hopefully you'll notice next to the main heatsink, there's a secondary heatsink with a mini fan and that is for cooling two SSDs. So this thing has a full PCIe Gen 4 by 16 slot for the GPU, and then four PCIe Gen 4 by 4 NVMe slots. All of them are Gen 4 by 4. That is insane. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and unplug this fan here, set it aside. Now this bracket has to come off, and the reason is the bracket needs to be removed to actually get under this heat sink. There's actually no SSDs under there. So currently, I have two SSDs installed, and they're installed on the back of the board because that seemed like the easiest place to get to SSDs if I needed to swap them out. And I already knew when I was putting the system together that the most likely culprit of the crashing I was experiencing was going to be my boot drive, considering the boot portion of the drive, the boot, um, man, what is it called? Partition, there we go, it just corrupted on me. I had to reflash it to get it working again, uh, but I was still having some weird instability issues. It's a cheap SSD that I bought secondhand online. It was never intended to be a boot drive, but I, listen, sometimes I will do things temporarily. In this case, I wanted to try Nobara Linux, so I installed it on this secondary SSD that I pulled out of the closet. I dropped it into a Gen 3 by one adapter so it was never running at its full potential. I installed Nobara on it and used it for months. Obviously I decided to stick with Nobara, but foolishly, I didn't ever switch it around to a good SSD. So here we are at the back and you can see the two rear SSDs. This is my four terabyte 
game drive and uh, it's coming out. I just have to remember how this works. I cannot remember how you do this. Do you just wiggle it till it pops out? I can't remember how I did this. Okay, I held on to the manual. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's super helpful right there, those instructions. That's great. That's fantastic. I don't even remember checking the manual when I installed them. I remember thinking, wow, this is very intuitive and easy. I don't want to break them. You know what? We'll flip it back around. We're going to pull off the SSD cover and we're going to look at what it looks like without anything installed. And we're going to see if it is actually simple and intuitive. And don't I have a magnetic screwdriver? I think this one's magnetic. Assuming these are fairest. And they are. Minis for them. The true heroes of the people. Some of you might have already noticed uh, this in the background. This is the Solidime P44 Pro 1 terabyte drive. This is what we're replacing it with. Solidime used to be with Intel. It used to be Intel's SSD division. It got spun off on its own, forced to survive in the cold, cruel world without Papa Intel to protect it. But these folks know a lot about SSDs. I hear their SSDs are good. I've never owned one. But I wanted to pick this one up because while it doesn't have the overall fastest read and write, uh, it does have pretty decent read and write. It's got a DRAM cache and it, it just seems like a good put together drive with a decent warranty, five year warranty. So I went with the terabyte drive because they don't have any smaller in the P44 Pro line. They have a different line of SSDs. I think it's like the P43 maybe that go smaller, but they're slower. Obviously, if you want a faster drive, they're gonna have to put more NAND chips on it and kind of sp spread the load. Normally with a boot drive, I like to keep it below 512 gig just because that makes it super quick and easy. If something goes wrong to just delete everything on it and then flash a backup to restore it and get it going again. But if you want performance, apparently you gotta go up to at least the terabyte these days. The problem is when you have that much storage, you wanna use it. Whoa, should I cut this one instead? I don't have my knife. I don't know where it is. I mean, I, it's in another room. I don't want to go get it. I've got to find something I can use instead because I'm being lazy. It wouldn't take that much effort to just get up, walk out the room, grab a knife. <laughs> it wouldn't be that great a struggle. Um, I, I like to keep my games off the boot drive because, again, if I just keep them on a second drive, if I have to wipe and reinstall the boot drive, there it is. It's nice not to have to worry about re-downloading games. So... Let's see if I end up getting lazy and just putting games on there. Some games get real mad if you try to play them on something other than the boot drive. One game in particular. I'm thinking of Skyrim. All right, if you've ever tried to mod Skyrim, you know it does not like, for whatever reason, being put on something other than the boot drive. So I never actually took this off. Ah. Okay, I was going to say something is holding this down. And it is. It's a second screw. At least the ridge is easy to work in. It's it's pretty compact. You see there's not a lot of wasted space. In fact, you'd be hard pressed to find any extra room except for maybe right inside of here where the cables are being routed. Um, at least it's easy to work in. Okay, so I guess, yep, we got some thermal pad underneath there. Lovely stuff, lovely stuff. It's got a little weird connector on it. It's not just like a normally sized fan connector, but that is what it is. So this one's labeled with an O2. This one's labeled with an O1. I'm going to put my boot drive in the O1. It doesn't matter at all, but that's what I'm doing. Okay, so I stuck it in there. Okay, yeah, you just kind of fold that back now. I think these things pull up. Yeah, and then they just pop off the top. Why could I figure that out down below? Why is looking at it like naked like this make that simpler? You can't see what I'm doing. My hands are all in the way. I'll show you on the other side. Okay, I want to move this one to the front so it'll also be under that cooler. I'm leaving this one in the back because it's still got some files in it. I didn't feel like copying off to the network storage, so I'm just going to mount it inside of the new drive once we get it flush with Nobara and copy the things over. You know what it is? I'll tell you what it is. It's that this is difficult to do when you don't have the leverage underneath it because there's already a drive installed, but this just pulls off. It comes up. There we go. So that just comes out of there. That's just like a pin. Drive goes in or comes out and then you just push the pin back in the hole, push it down. I would prefer a screw, honestly. No fidgeting around with a screw. You just put that sucker in there. This is this is how this came. This is how this was shipped. At first, I assumed there just wasn't a battery in there. You know, customs, shipping, whatever. But it seems to keep all of its settings, and it seems to keep time. I don't know why they did it like this, though. Meanwhile, back in the belly of the beast here, we can pull this one off. 
in preparation for sticking in the game drive. There we go. Got those installed. Now we just... I hope that was satisfying for you. Darn it, I gotta get this thing plugged back in now. I don't know, you, you take the screws off the SSD mount, but there's still screws on the SSD cooler. Just put screws on the SSD mount, honestly. Okay, so that's installed. Now all that's left is to replace the fan, right? Well, have a look at this fella here, all right? And just kind of hear me out, all right? Have a look at this fella and hear me out. This is the A15 from Noctua, the NF-A15. It is 150. 50 millimeters, I believe, but it's got the mounting holes of a 120 millimeter fan and it will not come out of the box. There we go. Look at that beefy boy. Now, I tried this the other day and the issue is it doesn't quite match up to the mounting bracket for the fan. But what it does do is shockingly friction fit in place quite well. And as you can see, the fan would now deliver air not just to the heat sink down below. It's upside down right now. I would have it flipped the other way. Here, you know what? Let's not cause confusion. It would be like this, all right? Blowing air down into the heat sink now. I mean, you can see the size difference. This is the size of the regular one. And roughly where it would mount. This one now delivers cooling adequately to our 96 gigs of RAM over over there. You know, depending on kind of where exactly we situate it, it'll it'll wash over the heatsink for it. <laughs> Is this dumb? It's such a bigger fan. It's it's like the fan portion is bigger than the frame of the 120 millimeter fan. My only issue with it is that I can't quite get it to line up with the mounting holes. It's definitely not gonna go that way. It won't quite line up with the mounting holes, so it would just be like friction fit, but also it's a friction fit. Or would it mount up, hold on. It's almost upsetting how close it is to fitting and how if I just, if I just trimmed a few bits here and there, I think it would fit. The thing preventing it is actually the riser. So this case does come with a PCIe Gen 4 by 16 riser over here. That is what the fan is hitting. That is what is preventing my otherwise absolutely brilliant plan from working. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the fan bracket. We didn't really talk about the memory here. Uh, this board officially supports 96 gigs, but only at 5,200 mega transfers per second. I couldn't figure out how to enable any kind of either automatic or manual memory overclocking in the admittedly very limited BIOS on the board. This memory is faster out of the box. This supports 5200. This is 5400 on the label, uh, only because it was cheaper. And you can just plop it in there and it'll run it at 5200 and it's fine. I, I don't know why. There's probably a reason. It's probably because that, you know what? It might be that 5200 is certified to run on some systems. And they know that people who don't know better will buy, spend more for the slower memory because their system says it's certified to run with 52, not 54. Ooh. And only us elites know that we can just run it at a slower speed. I'm determined now to at the very least attempt to this because it's kind of getting funny. Oh, the mounting screws don't even fit all the way down. That's right. The fan is, I think, quite a bit thicker, isn't it? No, it's the same. Is it the rubber foam? Is the rubber foam preventing it from... Oh, oh, I see what it is. It's that the little nubs on a regular fan, a fan that's actually designed to fit on here, those nubs where the screws go actually do fit physically into the holes in the fan and are part of what holds it in place. So the screws don't have to come out the other side. So the only way to make this work is to get it lined up with those and then force it down and then the screws will start does not seem like it's destined to be. What if I take off the dampeners here? They've got a little bit of thickness to them. If we take them off, first off, we might end up with some horrible rattling noise, but it might actually give us enough clearance. Ah, it's even tantalizingly more close. You know what? We're just wedging it in there. The I like the idea we're going with it, okay? I just realized how dirty my hands still are. Listen, replacing the carburetor on a mower is a dirty job, and it doesn't matter how often you wash your hands. They're just going to be a little black and tarry for a couple of days. You have to live with it. Take a whole shower after that. 
I went on to mow my yard, but I need to get some of that soap that's got granulated bits mixed in, you know? Like you find it at auto shops and stuff. You get it with pecan shells. And that, like, rubs the grease out of your hand. Exfoliates, too. Quite lovely. At the present, this system, even under full load, runs shockingly quiet, okay? I was thinking it was going to be very loud because everything's, like, bunched up in here. Uh, but no, it runs very quiet. Fortunately, this board does not have a USB-C header on it. So the C port on the front of this thing is just a dud. But I did find online a USB 3 header splitter and then adapter. So I could go from a USB 3 header to a USB 3 header splitter and then have the USB 3 header plug into one of the splits and then the USB 3 to C header plug into the other and at least the C port would run at Gen... Th I think this supports 3.2 Gen 1... 5 gigabit. It would run to 5 gigabit. And that adapter had a SATA port to supply more power to that adapter for quick charging things. That's pretty cool. I'm trying to figure out if there's anything I need to mention. If this doesn't work, if, if we get horrible noise or performance, I'll put the other fan back on. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention? The only fans that come with the case and the only fans that are in the case right now are these in the back. These are some fractal fans that come with it. They are the only intake on the system and they are blowing directly into the GPU, which itself is then pushing air kind of out everywhere and then there's no exhaust which bothers me but i don't know what we would do there's nowhere else to mount fans except for up at the top here there's actual unlike on the front where i was saying you could but they don't intend for you to there are slots up top for 80 millimeter fans all i'll say is good luck on that front because there's no room if you have a regular size gpu to also get little fans up here so we're just going with positive pressure pushing out hot air on its own there's no dedicated exhaust but it hasn't been a problem yet you can actually mix these up these panels i'm pretty sure they're identical this one here with the vents at the top those specifically go on this side because that's where the gpu is and there's no reason for there to be vents on the bottom that would be wasteful there's nothing down there back around we go where we see the fan is trying to make an escape but don't worry once it's installed incorrectly it'll stay you know what kind of sucks is even if this does work out, right, that fan doesn't jostle around and it actually cools everything and the whole system performs better, I'll probably still end up switching back to 120 minutes, 20... I'll probably end up switching back to 120 minutes... I will probably end up switching back to a 120 millimeter fan if for no reason other than the fact that it bothers me knowing that that fan is not bolted down properly. And now we're going to show you exactly what kind of performance you can expect from a 7900 XTX paired with a 13900H mobile processor. And by now, I mean I'm going to move this camera, I'm going to switch microphones, I'm going to switch scenes in OBS, i got to go plug this thing back in. I've actually got to install a full operating system on it because remember... I just installed a new SSD that at the present moment does not have an, uh, an operating system installed. I've got a lot to do. Okay, I gotta, I gotta go do all of it. We'll be back, maybe even not even today. I don't know. We'll see you in a bit. All right, folks, we've got the system plugged in and running. We've got Nobara Linux installed and set up exactly as I had it before. And we've got Halo Infinite completely maxed out, 4K all ultra settings. I've got the frame rate unlocked, which is not normally how I play. I don't have a high refresh rate, G-Sync, FreeSync, uh, variable refresh rate, whatever you want to call it, monitor. Uh, it's just a 4K 60 hertz display. So I, I don't like screen tearing and stuttering you get without V-Sync, but I've unlocked it just to see what kind of frame rates we can get. I've also got these. These are little smart plugs that actively monitor the power usage of whatever you plug in. And I'm capturing sort of separately on my phone, there's about a two second delay uh, in what it reports and what's actually being drawn. But to give you an idea of how much power we're drawing right now, we've got that 13900 mobile processor paired with a 7900 XTX. We've got 96 gigs of GDDR5 memory running at 5200 megatransfers per second. Uh, two SSDs, you know, three fans, four fans, depending on how you count it. There's three additional ones on the GPU. The entire system draw as of right now is just over 400 watts. It's looking at 417, and I know it's going to spike when I start moving around, but if you look up at the top of the screen, 
and you look at Mango HUD, you can see we're getting an easy 77, 83 FPS right now, again with all of the settings completely maxed out, and the CPU is nowhere near being a bottleneck. The CPU just hit 22% utilization, that is the most that I have seen it hit. Um, right now, the GPU is the bottleneck. We're sitting at very high 90 utilization. We keep hitting that 98, 97, 98%. The only way we would get more performance right now is if we had a better GPU. And I'm trying to move around because I'm trying to refresh the entire screen rapidly. Because that's a really good way. Oh, here we go. Well, you know what? Let's get into combat. Okay, well... I mean, as much combat as you can have with a grunt. Uh, system sitting at 430 watts drawn. That's crazy low. Actually, we can do some math right now. You can look at how much power the GPU itself is reportedly drawing, which is right at about 300 watts. It's it's brushing up to, yeah, there we go, about 301, 302 watts. And then the rest of the system is, what, 120 watts on top of that? That... <laughs> That's crazy! The GPU is currently using more power than the CPU and the motherboard and everything plugged into it uh, combined. It's using double that amount of power. And that's where I think these little mobile chips really shine. It's not just the cost, because yes, right now, or at least at the time I bought this board, it was on sale. You could get it for $540, which is, in some cases, less than the price of a comparable CPU. If I wanted to build this same system with a desktop 13900, uh, you know, I'd have to get an ITX board, a couple of sticks of full-sized memory. That's going to cost a lot of money, whereas for less than the price of the CPU, depending on what CPU you go with, I got the CPU, I got the ITX board, and I got a cooler, a pretty competent cooler, I might add. What are our CPU temperatures at right now? 63 degrees? Are you kidding me? That's it? It came with that cooler. All I did was slap the big fan on it. And you don't have to use a knock to a fan. Knock to a fan, that's like a $30 fan. You can slap any fan you want to on there. It might be louder, but it's probably going to cool just as well. You might even have a fan lying around you could use. So for $540, you're getting that cooler, that CPU, and you're getting the, uh, the motherboard. That's a crazy good deal. And then not only that, when you look at the performance we're getting, we're using way less power than that same desktop setup would be. A proper... ITX board, a proper 13900, 13900K, a full-size sticks of DDR5, and a big cooler. That's all going to consume a lot more power, and power costs money, so you're not just paying more up front, you're paying more in the long run. And as you can see here, I mean, I'm not want for power at all right now. I, I feel like we're getting really respectable performance. Uh, we're, we're going over 60 FPS here at 4K. Of course, if you're doing high refresh rate, you're probably not doing high refresh rate 4K. You can do that. You absolutely can. But if you are, you're probably at either 1080p or 1440p. Now, I will give you that at those resolutions, pushing frames requires a really powerful CPU. It does rely a little bit more on the CPU than the GPU. Right now, we're pushing 4K with all of the fancy settings like turned up to 11, right? So... That is obviously going to put way more load on the GPU. So let's actually test it. Let's let's finish this fight, as Chief is wont to say, and then we will actually change our settings. I think that in order to change a lot of the graphic settings, you do have to exit the game and go back in. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale the resolution to maybe 1440p. You know what? No, we'll do 1080. We'll go all the way down to 1080. Let's do that. So here we go. We're going to drag that down to 1920 by 1080. We're going to set our graphics to low across the board. Wonderful. And then I'm going to, uh, let's see, restart the game so it takes effect. Do you know what I was not anticipating? I was not anticipating getting the game to relaunch after lowering all the settings to be a complicated matter, but I actually had to switch Proton versions just to get our, our downgraded Forever experience to set. run. But here we are, and let's make sure that all of our settings stuck. Yep, there we go. We got our 1920 by 1080. We got all of our low settings. And I mean, it should have been obvious just from looking at this screen. We are now at 1080p, still hitting the GPU for 97, 98% utilization. Uh, but we are getting 182 FPS. The CPU is actually not being pushed all that much harder. Now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, sure, it's going up to like 26, 25, you know, percent. But, um... For whatever reason, I just expected it to be a little bit more intensive on the CPU, but as you can see, it's it's not breaking a sweat here. If you play the game 1080p, 
you know, 120, 144, 165, whatever you've got. This little mobile processor can absolutely do it. And our current power draw is uh, 420 watts. You also need to consider heat output, right? This mobile processor Nobody is not going to output as much heat as like a full I size. Did. Excuse me, I'm Maybe talking. Would you mind? You know what? Let's get away from here. Yeah, bring me a wasp. That sounds fun. That'll get me away from here. That'll also be good because we can get a whole lot more of the world loaded in, and that should add a little bit of pressure to the CPU. As we take flight, as I was trying to say before I was interrupted by our marine friend down there, you have to consider heat output as well in the equation. A full-size desktop 13900 is going to consume more power and output more heat into the space that you're in. If you have air conditioning, that'll increase your AC cost, so it's like a double hit to your overall cost to power the system. And then you also have to consider if you live in a place where air conditioning is not common, but it does get very warm, that's just more heat in the room. Now, maybe you live in a very cold environment, you might want your computer to add some supplemental heating. That's fine. I don't. I live so close to the equator that each year it gets hot enough outside and humid enough outside that your body cannot cool itself. It is actually physically, scientifically impossible for your body to cool itself. If you stay outside for more than 15 minutes without either drinking some cold water or taking a break, you will die of heat stroke. It happened to someone I knew. It, it happens frequently, right? Wow, the game looks really awful on very low settings, doesn't it? This is not... <laughs> This doesn't look great. We're also getting over 200 FPS right now. I don't know why I thought going up in the air would be more graphically intensive. That's clearly not the case. Maybe if we still had all of our settings up. I gotta say though, so far I'm really impressed. I don't know why Halo is my go-to game for this sort of testing. We'll try another game here in a minute, but running Halo Infinite, 1080p. Not how I would ever play the game. But we are pushing 200 FPS and the CPU is just not the bottleneck. The only GPU that I could get right now new that is going to compete with a 7900 XTX and really push the numbers would be something like a 4090. And those are going for stupidly high prices right now. I would never, okay? It's not going to happen, although it would fit in this case. I've seen people do it. At least the, the reference card from NVIDIA would fit. That would allow us to possibly push higher frames at higher fidelity and I don't think this CPU would be bottlenecked by it. That's the crazy part. The the mobile CPU is not going to be a bottleneck, in my opinion, for, I was going to say depending on the situation, but for uh, this mobile processor. But now that I think about it, I don't know if the actual situation you're using it in matters at all. Because as I think about it, we're at 1080p. If you want 1080p high refresh rate, the CPU is clearly not bottlenecking us. And if you want... 4K, you know, even possibly at higher refresh rates. Uh, granted, I mean, yeah, no, the GPU is still the bottleneck there, too. <laughs> we already tried that. We were getting about 80 frames, and the only reason we couldn't get more, it was the GPU. I don't know why this silly little vehicle is, like, one of the most fun things in this game. It's just, like, it's fun. It's got these little pea shooters on it. It's a great time. Did we do it? Did we save them? Are you good to go, Marines? You're welcome, fellas! Get back out there and show the Covenant what's what! Yeah, y'all go! I think it's enough Halo for now.